Hey there, Morbid Maniacs. It's time for another spooky video. And for tonight's spooky video, I am going to be talking about a haunted paranormal case known as The Haunting of Jackie Hernandez. Now, before I get into the story, I just wanted to apologize in advance if you hear the dogs barking, my neighbor's dogs. Anytime you walk outside, they start barking their heads off. In 1989, a newly divorced single mother, Jackie Hernandez, moved into a small bungalow in San Pedro, California. She was barely making ends meet at the time. Long hours at various jobs, and she usually dropped off her two children at her friend and neighbor's house, Susan Castananda. Things were slowly but surely beginning to happen in Jackie's home, but they slowly escalated to some of the most dangerous paranormal cases ever recorded. It started off by her hearing strange noises in and around her home, in empty bedrooms, and in the attic. She would also experience weird balls of light. Her cat would play with shadow figures. Pungent smells of death and decay would fill her home for no apparent reason. And objects would mysteriously move on their own. In one incident, Jackie claimed that a framed picture flew off the wall and landed several feet away from where it was originally located. Another odd thing that would happen in Jackie's home was this weird water-like substance that would pour from the walls and the lighting fixture. She soon became aware that something was off about her home. One evening, after the birth of her second child, Jackie had put both of her children to sleep when she came face to face with the entity that was haunting her home. She seen a face in her child's bedroom. The face began materializing out of the darkness and it grew to be a full-bodied apparition. The apparition was that of a decrepit old man wearing a flannel shirt and denim suspenders. The darkness in its eyes and the blank look in its face chilled Jackie to the core. She knew that this was not a friendly spirit. She knew it was something negative and evil. Jackie ran herself and her two children over to her neighbor's house, where after she had told her what had happened, her friend actually had her call in a team of paranormal investigators. The investigators were led by a man named Dr. Barry Taff. He was joined by fellow investigators and photographer Barry Conrad and Jeff Wheatcraft. They had investigated many paranormal cases before. Upon entering the home, the investigators were hit with a putrid smell that smelt like rotting flesh. They could not find the source of where this smell was coming from, and so they decided to air it out as best as they could and continue on with the investigation. During the investigation, the team witnessed peculiar events in the home, such as glowing balls of light and muffled disembodied voices. Incident, Dr. Taff was interviewing Jackie, asking her questions when they were interrupted by a loud crash in the attic, which was then followed by another loud crash. Jackie made her way to the kitchen where she pointed to the ceiling and she told the investigators that it was coming from the attic and she knew exactly what it was. Jackie told everyone that she heard a muffled voice coming from the attic a few months before. One day she decided to investigate this voice on her own and so she climbed up into the attic by herself with only a flashlight. Jackie saw nothing and nobody inside the dark and dusty attic. However, whenever she shined the flashlight into a corner, she claimed that a disembodied head came floating at her. Jackie said that she had not gone up there since and that she had not told anyone about the incident until then. She said that weeks prior, soda cans were flung at her as well as other objects. And she had also seen the same old man sitting at her dining room table. Jeff Wheatcraft, not long after the incident, decided to make his way up into the attic to investigate. He was up there, his camera was violently 
grabbed from his hands and thrown across the room. The lens and the body of the camera landed in opposite directions. Not long after, Barry saw that he was shoved by the same phantom hands that threw his camera. The other unusual activity that took place during the investigation was the unusual substance that was coming from the walls and floors. They could find no source for this liquid substance, and so they took samples of it and sent it off to a lab to have it tested and it was determined to be male human blood plasma. Jackie was actually questioned about the blood and she said she had no idea where it came from. The team returned to Jackie's home a month later after a frantic call she made in fear for her life. The photographer, Jeff Wheatcraft, hesitantly went upstairs to investigate and he was followed by another photographer whose last name I cannot pronounce. <laughs> Jackie and her neighbor Susan waited anxiously downstairs. Within seconds, they were startled by a loud, painful moan coming from above. Jeff was fighting for his life. Suddenly, without warning, Jeff fell victim to a powerful paranormal force. Seconds after entering the attic, something unseen had wrapped a clothesline around Jeff's neck lifted his body over the rafters and somehow hung this clothesline on this nail that was hanging on a board behind him. So it was pretty much hanging him. Gary had snapped several photos at the exact moment of the attack. In the photos you can clearly see Jeff's look of terror. His head was tilted to one side and a clothesline was wrapped tightly around his neck. Gary rushed to loosen the rope and actually bent the nail in the process. Shaken, pale, and confused, the two quickly made their way back downstairs. If Gary had not been in the attic with Jeff at the time, he believes that it would have killed him. The rope burns he had around his neck showed the severity of the attack. Jackie could feel that this paranormal entity and this haunting was becoming more and more dangerous. She actually moved out of the bungalow shortly after the incident, but it soon became obvious that the hauntings were not actually attached to the property or the home itself. She relocated to a place called Walden, California. One night, when Jackie was helping a neighbor move her TV down into the shed, she claimed that it flickered on and the old man that she had seen in the San Pedro house appeared. And then loud bangs started to occur in the shed just as they did in the attic. She was on the verge of a complete mental breakdown. She was alone fighting this powerful unseen paranormal force and the only people that she had to call that would understand was this paranormal team, so that's exactly what she did. The paranormal investigators made their way to her new place to investigate the haunting. They all sat down for a seance where they used a Ouija board to connect to the spirits. They all sat around a table with their fingers placed upon the planchette and the investigators began asking it questions. The camera crew actually attempted to film this session. The answers that they received from the board actually indicated that the spirit was that of a murdered dock worker from San Pedro. Jackie vividly recalled having a dream about a young man being hit over the head by a lead pipe and drowned by his assailant in the San Pedro Harbor. She said that it appeared to be sometime around the 1930s in the dream and she actually took the place of this young man being drowned so she felt all of his pain. What was even stranger was that it was later determined that the rope that was used to strangle Jeff Wheatcraft was actually tied in a nautical knot that was commonly used by seamen when they were working on the San Pedro docks. When they asked how many spirits were around them, the board answered, Phantoms fill the skies around you. 
When they asked why Jeff was attacked, the spirit answered that he resembled the killer. As if that was not enough, after the seance, Jeff was attacked once again. Witnesses claimed that he was suddenly picked up levitated and then was thrown forcefully against a wall. The cameras that were recording the event at the time all malfunctioned, unfortunately, so the event was not captured on tape. The events and Jackie's haunting was actually featured on several documentaries and TV shows and I actually remember watching one, I think it was like Scariest Ghosts Caught on Tape or something like that. And there was a part where they showed like the videotape of Jeff Wheatcraft actually getting strangled up in her attic and her baby girl had a mark on its head. So Jackie Hernandez suffered with this haunting for more than three years before she finally decided to move back to Los Angeles but far away from her former home. Dr. Barry Taff believed the spirit to be that of a man named Herman Hendrickson, a 28-year-old man whose body was found floating in the San Pedro Harbor in around March of 1930. The death was officially ruled an accident by the Los Angeles Police Department. He also believed that the ghost of the haggard old man was the person that actually built the home and still may reside there. It was concluded that Jackie's emotional distress at the time might have actually added on to the power of the hauntings. And since moving away and calming down and getting her life back together, the spirits have kind of weakened their hold to her. Since the haunting, Jackie and the others involved in the incident have put the haunting behind them and have moved on with their lives. To this day, many people have come and gone from the San Pedro house in California, where most of them have heard strange bumps and sounds coming from that same dusty, dark attic. There you guys have it. What do you think of this story? I remember the first time I seen this was on that ghost show, um, Scariest Ghost Caught on Tape. and. I thought it was really freaky. That was actually one of the really good ghost shows that they don't even play anymore. But I've always loved this case and I thought I would make a video about it. So let me know what you think. And I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If you did, please give me a big ol' thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel if you have not already and become a morbid maniac. And I will see you guys in my next video. The cameras that were a